Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we continue talking about the Bad App War. Now, this is part two. If you have not checked out part one, please click on the link down in the description below. Um, again, this is found on the wiki page, so if you just want to read the story itself, jump on over to the wiki page. Link is down in the description as well. And um, if you guys have any suggestions for any other topics of Warhammer 40k that you guys would like us to talk about, please comment down below. With that said, let's get into 40 facts about the Bad App War. During the mid 700th year of the 41st millennium, the Astral Claw submission of required gene seed tithes to the Adeptus Mechanicus became infrequent and incomplete. Although initially a cause for concern, such matters were not uncommon particularly those space marine chapters deployed to border areas or on crusade, simply because the chapter itself might have a temporary need to retain the gene seed itself to sustain battlefield losses. But as the omissions persisted, this signaled to the Mechanicus that there was some darker motive at work. This would later prove to be true with the Astral Claws, as evidence later indicated that this first great sin against the traditions of the Astarte would arguably result in the chapter's fall into heresy. Repeatedly denied the reinforcement he had requested to aid him and the Maelstrom warders in carrying out their task. In his arrogance and pride, the tyrant sought to expand his forces into a force equal to a space marine legion of old. Further covert investigation would later uncover that the Astral Claws Apothecarium were conducting heretical experiments in rapid zygote cultivation. Though largely unsuccessful, the Astral Claws eventually stood at around an estimated 3,500 Battle Brothers strong. In the year 729 of the 41st millennium, Huron's servants delivered a formal document of petition to the High Lords of Terra, making a detailed case for complete purging and subduing the Maelstrom and the surrounding areas. In order to achieve this, the document set out the case for a massively augmented deployment of space marines to the Maelstrom warders. Huron's petition was once again dismissed without a full hearing on the grounds that the Imperium's needs were better met elsewhere. After further requests to redistribute resources from the Maelstrom zone were denied and met with increased quota demands from the Administratum, in protest, Huron withheld Badat Primaris's planetary tithes to the Administratum, and further blockade the passage of trade through his realm in protest over the Adept's failure to provide him and his allies sufficient resources to police the Maelstrom. Refusing the Astral Claw's role as defenders of the Maelstrom Zone, the tyrant soon diverted the industrial resources and manpower to directly supplement the Badap sector's defenses as well as augmenting the Maelstrom fleet detachment and fortification of key worlds under his command. These space-based defenses encircling the outer and inner spheres of the Badap sector became known as the Ring of Steel. On Badap Primaris, the tyrant ordered the demolition of the ancient citadel of the ruling Dominars, and instead erected the legendary, hugely fortified Palace of Thorns to his own specifications and design. The clashing entitlement of the Administratum's Imperial Tithes and the ancient rights of the Astarte commanders to defend the Imperium by any means necessary swiftly came to be known as the Badap Schism and would last for more than a century and a half, during which the Astral Claws and the Maelstrom Warders would continue to carry on military operations as usual against a volatile backdrop of worsening tensions with the Administratum and the Segmentum authorities. The sudden loss of the lifeblood of industry and commerce were keenly felt by the Cathagor sector. For more than 11 centuries, the Carthan lords and planetary governors had held the charter to distribute the industrial output of the Maelstrom Zone and guard its passage through the administratum-controlled supply fortress of Sagan III, and then to the western Segmentum Ultima and beyond. Isolated by the vast distance, the Carthan had long grown fat and decadent, protected by the blood and toil of the more strife and torn realms. Freed from their inglorious garrison duty, the Astral Claws intervened in the aftermath of the infamous Fourth Quadrant Rebellion, which had troubled the Imperium for many decades. 
gathering in a mixed task force comprising of various companies from the Astro Claws, Firehawks, White Scars, and Celestian Guard chapter, backed by the Death Corps of Krieg and Kolsek Imperial Guard regiments, and finally the Titans from Legal Venator. Huron was elected battle leader by common consent. However, Stybor Lazarek, chapter master of the Firehawks, continued to harbor a grudge over the fact that Huron was given overall command despite his seniority as a chapter master. This grudge would fester over the coming years until finally it would bear the fruit of bitterness. In the year 821 of the 41st millennium, a heavily orc raiding force from the Maelstrom was intercepted and destroyed in a series of battles in the Kirbar sector in the Eidmon cluster by a combined force of the Maelstrom warders. During the battle, Huron slew Raka, the orc war boss, in single combat and was hailed as a hero of the people of Endiamon. In the year 869 of the 41st millennium, at the instigation of their chapter master, the Black Templars declared a crusade of wrath into the Maelstrom, assaulting it from the eastward approach. Meanwhile, the Astro Claws, Lamenters, and Mantis Warriors launched their own assault in the southern and northeastern approaches. Thanks in no small part to Huron's brilliant strategic planning, as well as the strength of the Maelstrom Warders and the Black Templars, they achieved a stunning victory against 23 alien or heretic stronghold worlds. Unfortunately, wider events intervened, once again putting a premature end to the Astro Claws plan. As the Black Templars were called away to aid the beleaguered realm of Ultramar in the wake of the Tyrannic War, having already suffered substantial losses in the campaign, the Warder chapter were forced to withdraw from the Maelstrom, much to Huron's fury. During this time, Huron was uncharacteristically reserved and withdrawn on his return from the Maelstrom, either locking himself away in the chapter's archives for days on end and refusing to see anyone, or keeping long silent vigils alone in the fortress monastery, gazing unblinkingly for hours at hollow spheres that depicted the Maelstrom Zone. Some observers say that it was during this time that Huron became corrupted and fell from grace. Denied his goal he had spent a lifetime fighting for, he had been denied his glory as it was snatched from his hands at the last moment by those he should call master, finally unhinged him, or maybe he had given in to hubris and false pride. Some of the tyrant's detractors have even gone so far as to suggest that during the Crusade of Wrath, while deep within the nightmare realm of the Maelstrom, something vile or warp-tainted promises had wormed their way into his heart. Matters worsen once again, not only within the Maelstrom Zone but the wider Imperium, as the threat of High Fleet Behemoth left the defenses of the Segmentum Ultima in disarray, the wars and rumors of wars as far as the Eye of Terror and the Ghoul Stars threatened to erupt, as well as a galaxy-wide revolt and other strange phenomena. Soon, crisis followed crisis, and in dying years of the 800th year of the 41st millennium, Huron saw the Maelstrom Zone slipping from his grasp, and all the victories the Warders had gained began to crumble, and so in an attempt to tighten his grip, he remained unaware that elsewhere events were moving against him. It would not be long before the brooding tyrant of Badat would spark into violence and the Imperium would once again shed the blood of its own. With preliminary judgments into the Badat system in the Segmentum Courts weighing in the Administratum's favor, an Imperial Investigation Fleet including representatives of the Adeptus Mechanicus Biologists and the Administratum Lords of the Cathargo Sector were sent to Badat to demand the delivery of bad up tithes and the chapter's gene seed requirements. In circumstances that cannot be fully confirmed or explained, the investigation fleet was fired upon and destroyed in its entirety as it attempted to force its way through the bad up system's so-called ring of steel in order to press its demands. No ship survived and more than 20,000 servants of the Imperium were lost. Soon, claim and counterclaim ensued in the aftermath to how this tragedy occurred, 
and Huron delivering his own Dominion's report on the bad matters to the Segmentum authorities, adamantly insisted that the fleet was fired upon only after refusing to give way to just authority of the system's masters. Within the Cathargo sector, outrage at the incident quickly became widespread, and soon such trade links that had remained between the Maelstrom Zone and the Cathargo sector were abruptly severed or subject to the harshest scrutiny. The Carthen Sector Governor, Tanit Koigen, moved to heavily censure the Astral Clause chapter, along with calls for the arrest and trial of Huron for such treacheries against the Imperium. With the weight of suffering and bloodshed elsewhere, the tangle of claims and counterclaims fell on deaf ears. In addition, Huron was the lawful master of the realm, permanently on a war footing, a bulwark against the Xenos and Chaos, and on the most basic level, authorized to defend those domains. Without hard evidence, charged of willful and predetermined homicide against the Imperium servants would be almost impossible to prove in this case. Over the next three years, the Carthan Imperial commanders took it upon themselves to send two further punitive expeditions into the Maelstrom Zone, but both fleets were lost in unconfirmed circumstances, supposedly near reaching the Badap system. The intervention of the Astral Claws and their allies was suspected. Unable to enforce their will decisively, the increasingly desperate Carthan lords, near bankrupt by this stage, attempted to circumvent Badab itself, taking the far longer and more perilous route in order to access the Lost Tides directly to make up for their shortfall. By the year 903 of the 41st millennium, the agents of the Carthan Imperial commanders began to spread propaganda in both the Segmentum Assize and the Senatorium Imperialis to any that would listen. As the local administratum continued to press the High Lords to intervene directly, the Maelstrom Warders continued to arm themselves for war and conduct sweeps of the Maelstrom Zone in force, while they simultaneously continued to augment their defenses within the Badap sector itself. To answer the continuing threats to the control of his domain, Huron issued the infamous Article of Just Secession which were also signed and ratified by the masters of the Lamenters and Mantis Warriors chapter. These documents were designed to formally sever the Maelstrom Zone's direct tithes to the neighboring sectors. In support of their cause, the document cited both the Edict that founded the Maelstrom Warders and the ancient rights of the titles of the Adeptus Astartes, precedents that both weighed heavily in their favor. These articles also called for a full investigation into the Carthan sector, asserted the historic and lawful sovereignty of space marine chapters involved from outside interference by lower adepta, and stated again their willingness to defense the maelstrom zone from any who would threaten it. As the situation devolved further, the Carthans threatened all-out war, but lacked the means to do so alone. Instead, the petition aid to mount an attack from the Departamento Minotorum and the Segmentum Naval Subcommand at Dreyza, but were flatly refused and informed that the matter was an internal dispute. Met with denials, the Carthagore sector itself drafted increasingly large number of troops into its planetary defense regiments. To further their goal, the Carthan satrap sent several direct and open appeals to several space marine chapters with whom they had past dealings with. The satrap had quickly realized that only space marines could truly hope to contest other space marines in open battle. The Firehawks were the first to respond to their cause. And those were 40 facts about the Bad App War. Again, this is part two, so part three is going to come out pretty soon, but if you guys don't want to wait, click on the link down in the description that's going to take you to the wiki page, and you could just read the entire story there. Um, and again, guys, if you want to learn more about the um, any chapter that I spoke about today, um, please check out our... Um, our channel, our history, our archives. Uh, we've talked about pretty much every single chapter that we talked about today. They have their very own video. Uh, so if you want to learn a little bit more, jump on over to, to our page and check that out. But now it's starting to get good. Huron versus the Firehawks. Who's going to win? 
Um, and again, thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing. Because you guys do that, it helps us create more videos. And um, if you guys want to support us a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos. If not, again, liking, commenting, and sharing really helps out the channel. With that said, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh,